Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 58 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in the class, we are using the SunFounder Raphael kit for Raspberry Pi. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick up your kit. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 57. And that homework assignment was to take the pan tilt hat that we have on the Raspberry Pi with the camera. Let me go ahead and switch over to that view so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And remember <clears throat> what I showed you how to do in lesson number 57, what I showed you how to do in lesson number 57 was to be able to track an object of interest by panning the camera. Okay, so I showed you how to develop a control system where you could track an object of interest based on pan. And then what your homework assignment was to take what you learned and add to the program where you could also track in tilt. And that way you could have arbitrary position of the object of interest and the camera would track it both in pan and tilt. That was the first part of the homework. The second part of the homework was that what I was finding is it was kind of hard to train on an object when the servos were on because it was jumping around trying to find an object of interest and then it was hard to actually dial in on your object of interest. So the second part of the homework assignment was to have two modes of operation in your program. The first mode of operation was train, and when you're in train mode, you're dialing in on the object of interest, but the, but the servos aren't moving. The servos aren't moving the camera. And then once you get it dialed in, you can switch over to track mode, and then the servos come on and then start actively tracking your object of interest. So I must ask, how many of you guys were successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below I am legend, double chest bump, and if you were not successful, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. And just a reminder of you guys doing the homework, make sure that you post your homework to YouTube, leave a link back to this lesson, and then down in the comments, link, link over to your homework solution. And you guys be looking at each other's solutions so you can kind of see how different people are approaching this problem. <clears throat> I think I've talked enough about the setup. I think it's time for us to jump in and start coding. And so the first thing we want to do is I don't want to start from scratch. So let's come over to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and let's kind of start where we left off last week. And so you can use the happy little search uh, tool and you can search on something like using pan tilt camera servo to track object of interest in open CV, something like that. You'll come to this lesson, lesson number 57 and you can come down here and you can click on these two little page icons and then you will with a little luck yeah you will be able to copy that code and then once you've got that code copied then we can come back over to the Raspberry Pi view here and then we have Thani opened up and then what we can do is we can just come in and we can paste that code and then we're starting off where we we're starting today where we left off last week. Now I always like to just run the code to make sure that copy and paste is working and that we're at least starting with a working program. So let's come in and run this and remember at this point it doesn't you know it's it starts off with the uh, it starts off with the uh, 
Okay, there it seems to kind of almost have it. So let me see if I can bring this down. Okay, and we bring this up, and then we need to just kind of get our track bars. Oh, that was not good. Let's get our track bars up here. And then let's see if we can kind of dial in on this thing. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Come down a little. Let me see if I can get a little more in view. Okay, and then I'm going to adjust this up a little bit, adjust this up. Okay, so now it looks like I've dialed in on this thing pretty good, and you can see the camera there, and so let's see what happens. Okay, as I am moving to the left, it is tracking. Okay, it is tracking. One thing that happens is it seems like this camera is doing an auto white balance. And as it is doing an auto white balance, it seems like it kind of loses my object of interest. I mean, it loses my training. But if I scoot back a little bit, I think my blue shirt was confusing it. My purple shirt was confusing it a little bit. But boom, I would say that that is working in the pan direction. So I'm going to say we are starting with a working program. So that's good. Let's see if we can come back. That's not it. That's not where we were. Where were we? Okay, there we are. Okay, so that is our starting point, the working program. Now, what were we supposed to do? We were supposed to go in and have a track mode and a train mode. And I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back and I'll kind of draw up our strategy for controlling the servo in the pan direction. Okay, now what would be the easiest way to switch from track or to switch from train to track because I want to start in the train mode and then when I'm trained then I want to switch to the track mode. What would be the easiest way to get that input from the user? What would be the easiest way to get that input from the user? We're already doing track bars. Let's add another track bar. So I'm going to say cv2.create track bar and this one is going to be <clears throat> I'm just going to say train is going to be 0 and track is going to be 1 so that's going to be my label where do I want to put it I want to put it in that same window which is my tracker okay and now do I want to start in train or track I want to start in train so that is a 0 Train like teaching, not train like, you know, choo-choo. Okay, train like teaching. Okay, and then what do I want to go to? One, because it's going to be zero or one. Zero is train, one or track. Did any of you other guys think of this kind of pretty simple way of doing this? I think you're probably, some of you probably got way too complicated on this, and probably you're going to see here that this is just going to be a real, real simple way. Okay, so now I've created the track bar. Now I've got to come up and create the function, okay? And so now this is going to be define on track 7. It's going to get the val, just like the other ones. And then what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to need, uh, am I going to call this train or track? I'm going to call this track, OK? So uh, so I'm going to create a global, va global variable. Global variable is going to be track, OK? And then track is going to be equal to val. And so if track is 1, we're going to track. If track is 0, we're going to train. Now, s now uh, and then I'll just go ahead and print it. So I'll say print track value like that. I always like to print just because it kind of helps with the debugging. And then we'll put track in. All right. Now, since I'm using this track and I might run into it before I touch the, the, the uh, track bar, I think I should probably come up here. <clears throat> and initialize that variable. And so just kind of, let's see, before I get into all of this, I'm just going to go ahead and give it track. It's going to start out at zero because why I want to start in train mode. So it'll be sure to know that track is starting out at zero. And so at this point, I should have that. I should be able to run this and it should run. Now it's not going to do anything, but I just want to see that it doesn't crash. Okay, so yeah, that looks good. 
that looks good didn't crash and let's look at the track bar make sure that I've got that on there and so if we come up here yeah you see I have this new value and it's not going to do anything but you see I can just switch from train to track like that so that's all good so now what are we going to do with it well if track is one I mean if if track is zero I don't want to be doing any I don't want to be doing any of this nonsense of moving the servos so where does that stuff start it starts here where we calculate the error like I still want to find the contours I still want to box the item of interest but I just don't want to do any of this stuff starting with error so I'm gonna say if train equal equal one meaning I'm I mean if it's not train its track if track is equal equal one then I'm gonna do all of this stuff <clears throat> now what's the problem all of this needs to be indented now I could go down and tab each one or I think I can just select them all all the way down to set my pan angle this is all the stuff there for this track business and I can come up to edit and then I can say uh, it says indent selected lines but it's not giving me that option okay let's try it again indent the selected lines and boom now you see all of this has been indented over underneath the track so what does this mean this means only if I've switched to track does it go in and find the errors and start moving the servo so let's see if this works let's see how well this works so let's run giddy up no errors you take the little victories in life where you can get them right so sometimes it's just a victory that the thing didn't crash so let's see if I can get this maybe where you can see that a little bit you won't be able to see mask let's get this up here a little bit get this up here a little bit okay now let's get our track bar over here it's hard for me to be able to get this where you can see everything but let me bring this here okay now there you see I should be able to train on that pretty well there and so I'm gonna open it up a little bit that looks good I'm gonna try to get some of that other tone down a little bit let's see if I go this way yeah you see that looks pretty good so you see how much easier it is to train if the servos aren't running all over the place now I am ready to what I am ready to what I am ready to track now you see I want to just kind of try this easy so I'm going to move this kind of to the edge here and now I'm going to come over if I can find my mouse and let's get this over here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from train to track giddy up look at that okay what if we come back here move it this way move it this way okay do you guys see that that is working so that I think was a big step forward in our software now what do we need to do now we need to go in and we need to get we need to go in and we need to get my sketch pad working there it is it's always a question whether the sketch pad thing is going to come on or not and now we will switch to the most excellent sketch pad view all right and now what are we going to do we're going to kind of map out our strategy for the control system in the tilt direction so let's come up and let's see if we can get going here and so what we're going to do is we're going to start with we start with a what I have a frame like that okay and then what I want to do is I come in the what do I want I want the center of the object of interest to be where in the center of the frame so changing that those words into math what do I need I need the coordinates of the center of the object of interest and the coordinates of the center of the frame well I've got the frame here and what do I know in the software go away you aggravating thing I have this is the display W DISP uppercase W and this is DISP uppercase H 
all right? And so then what is this center point? Well, that would be halfway over, which would be the coordinate DISPW divided by 2. And then where is it this way? It is DISPH divided by 2. And you can remember this because this is the point, the upper left point is the origin 0, 0. And then this point down here, which you can't see because it's behind me, this point down here is the point, point display w, comma, display height. And both of those technically you should subtract one off of because you're starting at zero. But we're we're not using those two points, so I'm not going to be that precise. Okay, that's not right. We'll come back over here. Okay, so now what do I have? I have the coordinates of the center of the frame. Now what do I need? I need the coordinates of the center of the uh, object of interest. So I'm going to come down here and I am going to get the right, I'm going to get the right drawing tool and I'm going to come down here now and I'm going to draw my object of interest. I'm going to draw my object of interest. So there it is. And now what is it that I want? I need to know the coordinates of the center of the object of interest. Well, what do I know? Let's come back over here and let's take a quick look at our, let's take a quick look at our program. We know here at this line of code, we find the contours, right? We find the object of interest. And then after that, we take the biggest object of interest and we write, we put a bounding rectangle over that contour. And then that command returns three, it returns four things. The XY coordinate of the upper left uh, corner of the bounding rectangle of the object of interest and then how wide that is and how high that is. And so with that, it comes, it becomes pretty easy. What is this point here? That is the point X and Y that the program gives us. Okay. And then this is the width and this is the height like that. And so what is the coordinates of the center? Well, it is X plus w over 2 for the x coordinate and then for the y coordinate y plus h divided by 2 like that does that make sense okay i hope that that makes sense give me just a second here okay so now <clears throat> What do we go back and think about? We go back and think about our error. Is this, is, go oh, away you aggravating thing. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Uh, is the, what do we want? We want the center of the object of interest at the center of the frame. Do we have that? No, we don't. We have a what? We have an error. Okay, and now you know that the thing could be over here and you could have a pan error and a tilt error. Well, we've already taken care of the pan error. Now we're going to take care of the tilt error. And so this then, what I'm going to call this, because I called the pan error error, I'll call this tilt error. Okay, how about that? I'll call that tilt error. And so now let's come up here and let's think what is the tilt error. Well, the tilt error is this point minus this point, the y-coordinate of this point minus the y-coordinate of that point is going to be the tilt error. And what is the y-coordinate of the center of the object of interest? Well, that is going to be, that is going to be, uh, I want to make sure I say it right, it is y plus h divided by 2. Okay, that's this. And now we want to minus this, which is this, which is just display height over 2. Now that is the magnitude of the error. Now what do we want to do? 
we want to drive that error to zero. Now, what are the two possibilities? Well, the error could be greater than zero. And in this case, you can see the error is greater than zero because this minus this is going to be a positive number. Well, if that is the case, if that is the case, excuse me, I've got to get these things lined up here a little better. If the error is greater than zero, then what do we want to do? We want to tilt the camera down. You want to tilt the camera down. And remember, down is in the positive direction. So what are we going to do? We're going to say that the tilt angle, the tilt angle is equal to the tilt angle plus one. And that will make it go down. Okay, the tilt angle is equal to the tilt angle plus one. Well, what if our op man, that is starting to annoy me. What if our object of interest was up here? Well, then in that case, the error would be less than zero. In that case, we want to point the camera up. And so we're going to say tilt angle is equal to tilt angle minus one. Okay, why minus one? Because remember last week we saw that a negative tilt angle points you up and a positive tilt angle points you down. Now I think with this information here, we have kind of what we need to do to go in and start putting our control system for tilt into place. Okay, so let's come back over to our most excellent, ah, that was probably an ugly noise for you. I wham the microphone. Okay, so let's come back over here. I think that's a nice view. And now let's come down and you can see that right here we take care of the error in the pan. So we're working with pan error here. Even though I just called it error, it probably would have been good to call it pan error all along. But this one we will distinguish by calling it tilt error. And tilt error, if we look back at our notes, is y plus h divided by 2. I always like to use parentheses and then minus what? Display h divided by 2. Okay, is that what we said? I believe that's right. Now once we do that, we've got to look at the two cases. If <coughs> error is greater than zero. But remember, if we say zero, we're going to have that oscillation problem. So let's go ahead and take advantage of the learning that we had last week. And we're not going to try to correct an error unless it's greater than 30 in the positive direction. And then what would happen? This time it is going to be tilt angle is equal to tilt angle plus one. Okay, tilt angle is equal to tilt angle plus one. Why? Because we want to move down some. All right. Now we've got to check. We don't want to drive that sensor too far down. And in this case, it's pretty easy to run this into the hat. So I'm going to put a pretty tight limit. I'll let you point up, but I don't want you to point down very far. And so I'm going to say if tilt angle, if tilt angle, is greater than 40, then what am I going to do? I'm just going to pin it. I'm going to say tilt angle is going to be equal to 40. So I won't let it go down further than 40 degrees to avoid a crash. Okay. Now, once I've done that if statement, then what can I do? I can go ahead and I know I've got a good tilt angle note now. So I will say tilt uh, dot uh, tilt dot set underscore angle like that. And what do I want to set? The tilt angle like that. I think that's good. Okay, I think that's good. Now what's the other case? If error is less than minus 30 pixels, then what do I want to do? Well, I want to say tilt angle this time is equal to tilt angle minus one. 
Why minus one? Because I want to start pointing it further up. I want to start pointing it further up. Now this time, if tilt angle is less than minus 90, because I'll let you go all the way straight up because there's nothing really for the camera to, for the uh, 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 pan tilt hat to run into going in the up direction. So we'll let you tilt up further than we will let you tilt down. So if the tilt angle is less than or equal to minus 90, then tilt angle equals minus 90. So we'll pin it there. And then now we have a good tilt angle. So what are we going to do? We're going to say tilt dot set underscore angle. And then we're going to set it to what? Tilt angle. How many mistakes have I made in here? How many mistakes are you guys yelling at me about? Okay. Well, I wonder, I wonder, could it really be that easy? Is there anything else I need to do? I don't know. We're going to try to run it. I will need you to hold your breath. Didn't crash. Okay. What's the good news is now, remember we are in, tra we are in train mode, right? We are in train mode. And so let's get these windows lined up here. I'm hoping you guys are using move windows commands, but it's just because I'm using multiple cameras or I'm using multiple screens. It doesn't work very well for me to try to move the windows automatically. So let's open this up a little bit. That looks good. Let's dial it in a little bit closer. I'm going to come over here and look. That's pretty good. I can't really do anything about, I can't really do anything about this or this because, uh, but the thing is, this is going to be big enough. That should work. And so let's look. Okay. Yeah. You see coming back. Yeah. It seems like it's locking onto that pretty, uh, pretty well. Now is the moment of truth as we say. And what is it that I need to do now? I need to go from train to track and let's see what happens. Boom. Look at that. Okay. The good news is it's staying stable. Okay. You kind of lost me there. Okay. What's happening? It, it, we need to go back to, uh, we need to go back to train. Okay. We got, we got some crazy business going on there. So let's see. Uh, let's see if we can get this thing found here. So what's happening is, there it is. Okay. So now let's see if I can come back and get that thing sort of back up. So I don't really know if I have an error or not. Okay. That looks good. Now I am going to try to dial in. Now that I've got it in a good position, I'm going to see if I need to kind of dial this in a little bit more tightly because it was seeing what got messed up is it was seeing the yellow on the top of the desk and it was starting to lock in on that. Okay. So now let me take this and let's see, I'm going up. And it's not really working. Okay. Do you see how it doesn't want to go up? So let's quit. What did I do wrong here? Ah, I see my problem. Did you see my error? Were you guys screaming at me? What do I need to be doing here? Tilt error. That one was terrible. That one was terrible. You guys were probably completely confused and I was panicking, man. It's not easy to code live guys. It is not easy to code. I will need you to hold your breath this time. Ah, let's see. I think maybe I didn't kill the program completely last time. Let's make sure the program's killed. Hold your breath. Okay, look at that. So we're going to bring this over. We're going to bring this over. We're going to get our track bar up. We're going to kind of dial in on that a little bit better. Okay, what are we ready to do? We are ready to make sure that you can see this well. Okay, you guys can see that. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to turn on. We are going to turn on our tracker. Okay, it kind of stabilized there. That's looking kind of good. Maybe a little bit of up and down, but we're not going to quite worry about that yet. Let's see if we come over. 
Okay, it is tracking nicely in the pan direction. Okay, now let's see if it's going to stabilize. Okay, now we're going to come up and it is tilting. Come down and now let's go across and now let's go up and diagonal. You see I'm kind of moving it up and diagonal. And so we are getting pan and tilt working at the same time. Okay, so now let's just put it down and see if it'll stabilize. Taking a second to stabilize there, you know, maybe what we would need to do. Let's do one more adjustment. Okay, let's make this 35 pixels instead of 30 in all these places. Okay, uh, let's make it 35 in all of these places. So this is going to be 35. 35, 35, 35, 35, 35. Okay, and that'll just make it a little bit more stable. So let's try this again. Okay, we are in train mode. So let's get this thing trained on here. I'm feeling more confident about getting it trained. Okay. Dial it in a little closer. Okay, get this over here. Get this up. All right, now we are going to turn on the track mode here. So here we go. Okay. There it is. Okay, going up, working like a champ. Let's see if I can turn it over this way, moving it over, moving it back. Let's see if I can even track it when it's further away. Okay, guys, look at that. Boom. All right. That is pretty darn cool. Okay, so we've completed the homework assignment. We're tracking in both directions. Now, you saw we had a little bit of an oscillation issue there. What I would do is I would go in and I would tweak that number a little bit more and figure out exactly should it be 35, should it be 30, 25, should it be 40, and I would get a little bit more comfortable with that uh, with that parameter of how small of an error do we try to drive out okay now let's talk about your homework for ne for next week and this is what are we like about where we are now what do we like about where we are now there's a lot of good things to like about this okay a lot of good things to like about this but all right let me, uh, let me see if I can draw it and say what we like, okay? So here is our frame, okay? I don't like that color. Okay, here is our frame, okay, like that. Here is the center of the frame. And I think you guys can see that that I'm just gonna do it for I'm just gonna do it for a uh, for a pan, but then you can kind of see that that this would also equally uh, equally apply for tilt. And so let's let's come over here and let's say then my object of interest is way over here, and then I have the center of my object of interest here. So what do I have now? What do I have now? I have a error like this. Okay, that was terrible. Let's see if I can draw it better like that. This is my what? This is my error, and it's my error in pan. All right, now I see I have an error. In this case, do I have a big error or do I have a small error? I have a big error, and this object of interest is about to leave the frame. And if it leaves the frame, what is the problem? Then I've lost the object of interest in the camera. If it continues moving over, the camera can't find it because once it is out of the uh, frame, then your control system is going to stop. 
All right. Now think about what we do. We see this error, and then how do we correct the error? We go like this. We, we just look, well, I'm not pointed enough to the right, so I'm going to click to the right. I'm still not. I'm going to click to the right. I'm still not. Click, 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 click. And as I'm trying to chase this thing, this thing might have already left, okay? And so if I really want to track this thing, this is kind of slow because I'm going click, 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 click. All right. Well, what's something, uh, you know, what would be a better way? Well, what if I did big jumps, like I made a big jump like that, and then I could, I could track it a lot better. But then if I make big jumps, what is the problem with making big jumps? Well, what if it's here? Okay, what if it is here? Okay, what if it is here, and then I come in, and I make a big jump, I jump over it, and then I make a big jump back, and I run into that problem that we have as we were trying to drive the error to zero. <clears throat> so the problem with small jumps is, the problem with small jumps is you're moving too slow. The problem with big jumps is you'll jump over the target. So let's, let's kind of look at this and think instead of making always little bitty jumps what would be a better way to do the correction instead of saying pan angle is equal to pan angle minus one, right, because we're going, we're going in this direction, so that's going to be a, a minus one. Instead of that, instead of always making this minus one, what would be a different way to do it? All right, so this is your homework. Your homework is to go in and create an improved control system where you're not just jumping by one degree. You're jumping in a more intelligent way. You're jumping in a more intelligent way. That's all I'm going to say because you guys, some of you guys are real pros and I want this to be a challenge for you. Okay. I want this to be a challenge for you. And if you're just completely hung and just yeah, work on it and work on it, but don't worry, I'll show you how to do it next week. But I really want you guys, I want some of you guys to figure out what the better solution is. Okay. I want some of you guys to figure out what the better solution is. When you get the better solution, post it to YouTube. Okay. Leave a link back to this video down in the comments, leave a link over to your solution. And then you guys start looking at how other people have solved this thing. So this is kind of where we're going next week. I will show you the solution to a better control algorithm for this. And then I think after that, I think the next, because then we've got our control part of this thing working real well. And then after that, I think we're going to start doing things other than just tracking objects of interest based on color. Maybe could we treat, teach OpenCV to find a face? and then track on a face that when it finds a face that it tracks on that. So that's kind of the direction that we're going to be going now is after next week, our basic control system is going to be working for controlling the position of the camera. But now, how can we get more and more sophisticated about finding a face, finding an eye, maybe finding the tip of a pinky finger, and then start tracking on a wider variety of things. Guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking this class as I am making them. If you enjoyed the lesson, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you leave a comment down below, that always helps us with the old YouTube juice. If you've not already, subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell because that will give you notifications when our future classes are dropped. And finally, share this video with mo more people. Most importantly, share this video with more people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.